welcome back to my makeup and beauty channel my name is Tejaswini and today's video is a little bit different we are talking about makeup but more specifically bridal makeup as some of you would know I am a professional makeup artist and I when I'm not here on YouTube I am primarily working with either brides or models or teaching professional makeup so uh, today I'm going to answer 10 most frequently asked questions which um, brides or clients when they are trying to you know finalize their bridal makeup ask me so hopefully this video will also act as a guide for you if uh, you know you're starting to prep for your d-day and you're looking for that perfect person to do your makeup uh, you might find it helpful to ask these questions and uh, you might find it helpful for me to give you some of these answers so yeah let's begin So along with the makeup, there is also hairstyling, painting of the nails and draping of your bridal outfit and your dupatta. Uh, what is also included with this is uh, doing base for your body and doing a little bit of foundation on your neck, on your arms, your tummy, your back, whatever areas of your body are exposed, uh, usually also covered in some amount of base to give the skin an even look throughout. Yes, I do travel to the bride. I also have brides come to me here at my studio. So, um, you know, whatever works uh, better for the bride and on that date, uh, both the options are available. So I have a couple of favorites from a lot of good brands, uh, be it uh, Chanel, MAC, Bobbi Brown, Estee Lauder, Lancome, Sephora, uh, you know, all the good ones. Yes, we do makeup trials for uh, you know brides and they usually how it works is that they schedule an appointment to come to the studio and we sit down, go through a couple of pictures, try to understand what their style is and you know what kind of makeup speaks to them and post that I try to show them at least two different looks on each side of the face, uh, two different kinds of eye makeup, maybe one would be more modern and contemporary, one would be more traditional try to change lip colors and see what really suits with their skin even if we don't really know what the color of the outfit is going to be like. Um, I also try to show them a difference between high definition and airbrush makeup. So yes, if a bride does ask for makeups for their family members or bridal party, we usually have senior artists who work on them while I'm working on the bride. And uh, if the bride wants me to specifically do her mom or her sister, then I do that as well. But we time the, diff you know, we schedule the appointments differently. So normally how it works is when I start, uh, you know, doing the makeup for the bride, I usually have an assisting artist who starts painting the nails and starts prepping the hair for the final hairstyle. And once the makeup is done, I dress out the final hairstyle myself. Of course, uh, it is at the end of the day your big day and uh, your suggestions and your inputs are my utmost priority. I've had brides come and tell me that they don't want to wear eyeliner or they don't want to wear kajal or in fact don't even want to wear foundation. And um, I absolutely work with their preferences whatever they feel comfortable in because after all it's your day if you don't feel like yourself there is really no point to the whole exercise and absolutely I 100% take into account whatever the bride wants. So the two different types of makeup uh, that we do on brides is either high definition or airbrush. High definition makeup is applied using a traditional method like brushes or sponges or fingers and uh, this is better than normal regular makeup that you use in your everyday life. Uh, the foundation has pigments which are very finely milled and uh, you know give a very very high coverage but at the same time they look like second skin and it doesn't make the skin look like there's a lot of makeup sitting on it or it doesn't look cakey at all and it lasts perfectly too. Uh, airbrush however is also high definition makeup but it gets 
sprayed from a gun. So, uh, you know, imagine little pixels of makeup hitting your face and setting dry the moment they come in contact with your skin. Uh, it's a lot better and a lot finer than even HD because HD is still like a block of color applied to your skin. Whereas airbrush comes out of a gun and is a super, super, super fine mist of makeup that looks extremely natural and lifelike. Um, it also is way more water resistant than HD. Um, just to add, I would like to let you know that airbrush makeup does not work very well for very mature skin or skin with a lot of fine lines or even if you have a lot of um, active acne going on at the moment, uh, then you would rather go with HD makeup than with airbrush. But if you are someone who has uh, very oily skin or you sweat easily and if you are going to be sitting in front of the fire for a really long time, if, you're, um, you know, if the time length of your event is really long, then uh, going for airbrush is ideal. So yes, most Indian brides do go with uh, the typical bridal updo and uh, what determines the kind of hairstyle that you're going to have is really uh, your dupatta, the weight of your dupatta and uh, the kind of uh, jewellery piece that you have for your head whether it's a mantika or a mathapatti, uh, it, it totally depends on what you pick. If you want a more interesting hairstyle, something that's more messy, loose and feminine, then I would really recommend going for a lighter dupatta and a simpler hair accessory. If your dupatta is also heavy and if you have a chunkier piece on the head, then we do not really do too much, uh, you know, too many interesting things with the hair because then it tends to look very busy and doesn't sit very well. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Mostly the dupatta sits here so your playground is pretty much in front of the ears, you know, the dupatta sits here right uh, in line with your ears and whatever interesting stuff you can do is in this area. So we can either twist it or uh, if you're more comfortable with a side parting, do maybe like a French braid and uh, to be very honest, it will depend on the kind of uh, hair accessory that you pick. So the brides at their venue really do not need to keep much with them. Uh, I usually travel with my lighting, my mirror, my portable furniture for the makeup. And uh, what they can do is that they can keep like a lip touch up of some sort for later. We're going to be using makeup fixers, whether be it airbrush or uh, HD, we're using a makeup fixer on the face and everything else stays intact but your lipstick. Your lipstick does tend to become a little bit patchy when you eat and drink so it is ideal to have some form of a touch up. If you've already done your trial with your artist and you know what kind of lip color you're going to wear then you can keep that color or a color similar to that. Uh, if you just keep a lip brush with you which has you know which are those uh, the ones with the cap you can ask your artist to load up the brush and you know, put the cap back on for later when you need to touch up. Uh, another great thing to keep is uh, blotting paper. If you uh, are somebody who gets shiny or oily easily, then it is advisable that you keep uh, the oil blotting sheets with you and just sort of dab them around your face after the, you know, you've had uh, an exhausting dance session or you've been sitting in front of the fire. So those are the few things that you might want to keep with you for later. So that's it guys, those were the 10 questions that are most often asked by brides-to-be and I hope I could answer some of the questions that you may have had. In case I forgot to include something, uh, you can leave me a comment below on my YouTube channel and I will be happy to answer them for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye!